Kevin Aquario. I'm the executive director of the New York State County Executives Association. Uh, and I'd like to thank uh, the members of the media who took time in what is always a very busy day to join us here today. And I'd like to also thank the county executives from across the state for taking time from their ongoing uh, public service to share some stories uh, with you. Uh, to put things very quickly in context, uh, as you are all aware, uh, the leadership in the nation's capital uh, continues to work towards a bipartisan agreement on a new round of COVID-19 federal stimulus legislation. Unfortunately, that did not get voted on this week and the House will adjourn, which means the House is going to have to come back to Washington, uh, D.C. Uh, we've gathered the county executives from around the state here today to make our collective voices heard loud and clear and say that counties are running out of time in 2020 for the federal government to enact legislation that provides direct unrestricted aid to local governments. As you'll hear from the county executives today, county budgets are being stretched to the breaking point. These budgets support essential services like frontline workers, responding to the pandemic through public health, our coroners and medical examiners, social services, mental health, public safety, including 911 dispatch, emergency management, county nursing homes and hospitals, community testing and contact tracing, rolling out and assisting in the vaccination process and helping Main Street businesses reopen safely. Total county revenue losses, outside of the city of New York will approach $1.3 billion due to the COVID pandemic, and these numbers could grow even worse in the coming months. We need the Congress to act now. We're in the middle of a national emergency. This natural disaster needs a national response. Specifically, the counties are calling for direct, flexible federal aid for all counties and the city of New York, in addition to the state share. The county allocation should be a city-county funding split. There should be deadlines extended for the Treasury COVID relief fund dollars until late 2021, and there should be reasonable guardrails that ensure these COVID-19 relief dollars are tied to the public health, economic, and community impact of COVID-19. With that said, I want to turn it over to the association president, the Dutchess County Executive, Mark Molinaro. Thank you, Steve. And uh, Steve uh, really uh, sort of framed uh, today's conversation. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge and thank all of uh, my colleagues. Uh, and um, uh, for those of you uh, who can visualize and actually see these faces, uh, I, I really want to reiterate and reinforce uh, the fact that you are looking at uh, the team of frontline responders. Uh, for the last 11 months, county governments have been on the front line uh, preparing for and responding to this pandemic. Uh, across America, 1,900 public health departments administered by county governments, 1,000 hospitals administered by county governments. And here in New York, uh, county governments have led uh, the charge in responding uh, to this great American crisis. What is equally important uh, is that uh, at this level of government, uh, it, uh, we don't ask uh, what party affiliation you have, we respond to the need. And you'll see Republicans and Democrats from all across the state of New York uh, have been working together, collaborating, and grappling to confront uh, this historic uh, challenge. Uh, it is, I think, important to note that we are at a watershed moment. Never before in the history of America has the federal government left its local governments to fend for themselves. And it is necessary now more than ever, as we can start to see the light at the end of this tunnel with vaccines and vaccinations approaching, uh, that county governments, the the, the level of government that has been working on the front line uh, that uh, county governments, city governments, and those uh, at the local level have been responding. It is critical that we see uh, the federal government step up and meet uh, this challenge of our lifetime. We need that unrestricted assistance uh, financially uh, so that we can continue to provide uh, not only response, but the core services that county governments are, are responsible for. As Congress is debating, and they've been debating for a while, we want to thank our two uh, U.S. Senators and our House delegation. Republicans and Democrats all across New York in uh, Congress have been advocating for this very uh, need, this, this local government commitment. Why? Because they understand that today uh, and for these last 11 months, if an individual needed uh, to be tested, it's likely they communicated with a local health department, contact tracing, 
uh, organized, administered by local health departments, emergency responders through our emergency response operations, local county uh, governments. At the same time, uh, when small businesses needed ac access PPP, it is likely that they communicated with or were assisted by the county economic development engines or their tourism promotion agencies. And when families uh, suffered uh, financial uh, loss, it, they turned to county governments in New York uh, for Medicaid or social service assistance uh, or outreach through TANF and other, other provisions of, of county government resources. And I would note uh, hundreds of thousands of families uh, have celebrated holidays these last few months with one less person around the table, an empty chair at the dining room or a parent or a loved one who didn't come home because uh, of, of lost life. I, I certainly know this uh, personally, and I can tell you uh, that it, uh, it, it has been, in many cases, our mental health providers, our uh, public resources, our county governments that have been there in the greatest time of need uh, for those who struggle and continue to struggle the hardest, from senior citizens uh, to veterans uh, to those uh, less fortunate, they turn to us. Uh, and my colleagues know this uh, uh, as well as anyone. Uh, so again, this is a watershed moment for uh, the Congress. And we're calling uh, on our leaders, uh, both Republicans and Democrats in the House and Senate. And I say this as a Republican myself, especially my friends, uh, Republicans in the United States Senate. It is time to step up uh, to summon the courage and the political will uh, to do what is necessary uh, as uh, we together confront this great American crisis and prepare for uh, the light that we now see at the end of this tunnel. Uh, what we'd like to do uh, today, and we've never really convened all of us at once, I know that this could be a bit timely, uh, but what we'd like to do now is to uh, share some time with uh, each of our colleagues, very quickly go around the state, uh, but I'm going to turn first uh, to County Executive Mary Ellen O'Dell uh, from Putnam County. She serves as President-elect uh, uh, of uh, the uh, organization. Mary Ellen, uh, go right ahead. Uh, thank you, Mark, and thank you for um, to NYSEC again for staying on top of this very important issue. I mean, clearly to echo everything that Mark said, I know we all feel the same way. The, the year 2020 will definitely be one that we won't forget anytime soon. And, and it, I think when polled by all of us, one of the things that resonates the most is, is the tremendous amount of loss that we've all felt. And on that personal level and the loss of, of employees, I mean, we lost a dispatcher here in our 911 center and, and that was devastating to our first responder community and of course to our community here of family in Putnam. But uh, what's also been equally devastating to watch has been the collapse of the business community. Putnam County is a uh, is unique in some sense. We are a Main Street economy, basically 90, probably 95 percent Main Street. We've seen so many of our businesses close their doors, and um, we're not sure if they are going to open. Just this week, we lost one of our distilled. Um, Breweries. breweries, which was such an exciting opportunity seven years ago when they opened for a, a, a very talented woman and her partner who brought this great creative concept to Putnam County. And, and uh, I, I don't know if we'll see her open. She's optimistic. We see her open her doors again. But that's just one example of so many businesses here. And, and the election, the election and the politics and all of that noise out there isn't helping any of us in our morale and trying to keep our businesses optimistic about you know staying focused and hoping that hope is hope will arrive soon and that will come in the form of funding and stimulus funding so um i'll just leave that with everyone and um hope that uh you know maybe today's today's um zoom and meeting and collective and collaboration will bring us um, a, an opportunity to share that with washington Thank you, Mary Ellen. And, and someone who has sort of been at the tip of the spear of the second wave in New York uh, is uh, uh, Mark Polencars, the county executive of Erie County. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you, County Executive Molinaro. And I just want to echo exactly what you've heard from County Executive Molinaro, <clears throat> as well as County Executive Odell. Uh, we are united in our efforts on behalf of the people of New York State. Uh, and I can tell you, as someone who's in my third term now as county executive, it's not always been the case that county executives from Democratic and Republican communities always agree. They don't. <laughs> but on this one, they do. We understand the issue that's facing us. Not only are we, as we, as you just noted, in Erie County in Western New York facing this very strong second wave of coronavirus, very soon we're going to be the ones that are instrumental in delivering the vaccine to the greater community. And as a county that received CARES Act funding, a lot of the PPE, a lot of the things that we've purchased already 
for that vaccine delivery were as a result of CARES Act funding, but that expires for us at the end of this year. And for many of the counties that are on this call, they didn't get a single dollar of CARES Act funding. We need Washington DC to do what it has to do, which is help the front lines, fund the front lines that are going to deliver the vaccine, as well as continue to respond to the coronavirus threat by providing local governments the assistance and aid that they need. And we need direct aid from Treasury to the counties. Uh, as was unfortunately seen in the first round of aid, it went to New York State. And unless you were a large county of over 500,000 in population, you didn't receive any aid. 48 out of the 50 states sub-allocated their assistance to their local counties. New York State wasn't one of them. So while Erie County was very lucky to have received funding in the first round, which we use not only for our direct response, but to help our local business community, to help parents who need to provide for childcare, uh, we need a second round to not only address what is the second wave of the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak, but to also help local governments that are going to be the front lines with the vaccine delivery. Without it, we're gonna be put way behind the eight ball. And it doesn't matter where you live in, not only New York State, across the country, so on behalf of everyone in Erie County, I want to thank my partners for the good work that they've done so far. We know there's a lot of work ahead, but together as New Yorkers, not members of a political party, we call on our representatives in New York State to continue to advocate for us and our friends in the other states of the United States. We need your support, just like every county in the United States needs your support. Please pass local government assistance in this next round of aid. Thank you, Mark. It's important to note that Mark also represents us uh, at uh, the national level, the National Association of Counties, and we're grateful, uh, Mark, for your participation there, and, and know that, that the House and Senate delegation here in New York really worked hard to get NACO at the table, so thank you for that. And certainly uh, going to the other end of the state, and, and we're grateful uh, 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 for the cooperation that uh, uh, Suffolk uh, uh, and, and Nassau counties uh, provided early on, the, the, the tip of Long Island, uh, felt uh, the first wave uh, uh, fairly quickly and fairly early. Uh, Steve Ballone, uh, you've been helping to spearhead this uh, this effort. We're grateful you're joining us, ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, County Executive Steve Ballone. Mark, thanks very much, and, and thanks for your leadership and, and your work on this. Uh, to uh, my other colleagues on the call, of course, Steve Aquario as well. Uh, it really is a pleasure to be with everybody on this call. And, and as you mentioned, Mark, uh, we were the really the epicenter of this for a time, really at the beginning of this um, in the downstate region. Laura Curran, uh, I believe is on the call. She's done a, an outstanding job as well. But uh, we went through that and, and we were able to, to flatten that curve as we've talked about. And uh, for many months we're doing very well, but like the rest of the state and, and really the rest of the country, well, this has been a regional uh, event in many ways as this has rolled out over the last nine months. It is now everywhere in our nation. Um, and this is a global pandemic. It is a national emergency. And quite simply, it would be unconscionable uh, for Washington, for our federal government, to, do not, to not deliver the direct uh, aid, that disaster aid, uh, to the state and local governments, to the counties, uh, that are on the front lines fighting this pandemic. It would be unconscionable in my view to essentially say, we are going to put the, the brunt of the cost of this response, of this national emergency, unprecedented event that none of us have, have ever experienced, nor did any of us, I'm quite confident, ever expect to uh, go through, that we're gonna put that on local taxpayers. Because really that's what the message is at the end of the day. If this, if, if the federal government doesn't fulfill its role here, which is uh, as our federal government has always done in times of natural disasters, and that's what this is, it's different than any that we've experienced before, but this is a natural disaster. Our federal government has always been there. That's, that's central to the purpose and the role of our federal government is to provide that aid and assistance when local communities and, and states are facing something that is beyond their capacity to handle uh, alone. Uh, if they fail to do that, let's be clear, that means this cost, the burden of this response, falls directly and squarely on local taxpayers. 
uh, which include, of course, the first responders, the essential employees, the healthcare workers, all of whom, as you said, Mark, are on the front lines and have been since the beginning of this pandemic. So uh, I'll echo uh, the comments of my colleagues. This really has been bipartisan. You're not going to find a group uh, of individuals, I think, who understand how uh, nonpartisan of an issue this is because we deal every day in, in delivering the critical services that people need and politics and partisanship has nothing to do with any of that. Uh, we do public safety, we do public health, social services, human services. All of those things are critical every day. They're even more critical in the midst of a global pandemic. So this is not a partisan issue. We've worked with our congressional delegation, Republicans and Democrats alike. Uh, I thank Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand. They've really been leading the fight. Senator Schumer uh, in his leadership role. And we appreciate that. But Washington needs to get this job done. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and let's, uh, we'll jump uh, to truly upstate New York. Uh, Anthony uh, Pacenti, Tony Pacenti, County Executive of Nida County. Thank you, President Molinaro. I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, to all my colleagues uh, on the call, thank you uh, for a partnership. I'm proud to serve with each and every one of you. And of course, to Steve Aquario, a great leader at NISAC. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we're, you're going to hear the same thing, but I would just go on what uh, good friend Steve Ballone had just talked about in terms of what county governments do. And, and we, we've been stressing this time and time again, and I've been in office for 14 years, and Mark Polencar has talked about his, into his third term, I'm into my fourth term. Never thought I would see this. And, and clearly, as Steve has said and Mark has said, I mean, this is unprecedented in terms of a national emergency here. And county governments are on the front lines. We've always been on and, and when our federal leaders talk about contact tracing, when they talk about mask ordinances, when they talk about uh, restrictions, those are being done by county governments on the local level. Not being done by anyone else, by county governments. We have, as, as Mark Molinaro said, as our president said at the beginning, been on the front lines from the very beginning, from day one. Those that were, saw the initial surge like like Steve Malone and like Laura Curran and like, you know, like others in downstate and those of us now. In the last two weeks, 40 per, just two weeks, 40% of our cases, total cases, have come in the last two weeks. This surge is growing each and every day. And I would point to what, what Steve said about what we do. You know, the areas of, of child abuse, abuse and neglect that we have to deal with, elderly uh, care and, and meal delivery, uh, the overall mental health uh, deliveries, those get expanded and amplified in the time of a pandemic and have never been even greater. So the needs of just, not just us dealing with this pandemic one-on-one -on -one with our residents, it's everything else we do that then gets amplified because of what we're doing and because we are the front line of service uh, to all residents. So I echo that. I wanna thank Senator Schumer. He's been a great partner in this and he has been carrying uh, the, the message uh, I urge as a Republican, as, as Mark did, as, as a, to the Republican leadership in the Senate, take heed of this and understand uh, that this is not a bailout. This is in need of what you're supposed to do as a federal government to help local governments and to help the residents that you represent as well as we do. Everyone is, we all have the same constituencies and they are in need of help. And your help to local governments and to counties and states are providing that help directly. It is essential, it is imperative, it is critical that this get done. Thank you, Mark, and, and uh, for your leadership, and thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. Thank you, Tony. Uh, and uh, certainly um, uh, a little bit closer to uh, what uh, was for a, uh, certainly a long time the, you know, the epicenter of, of this entire national response, uh, closer to New York City, uh, uh, Laura Curran County Executive of Nassau County. I do want to note uh, as well uh, that we've been very, uh, we are grateful to uh, Mayor de Blasio's participation and leadership in really advocating for both uh, state and local governments, even today moving further, actually moving further, but very clearly articulating the need that county governments like the city of New York uh, need this direct, uh, direct assistance. Uh, Nassau County Executive uh, Laura Curran, uh, followed by then Rockland County Executive Ed Day. Laura, you have to unmute yourself. I apologize. You know, I still do that. I, I'm so 
I think I would have learned by now. Sorry. Thank you very much, County Executive Molinaro. Um, good to hear from my fellow county executives from, a, from around the state and Steve Ballone, as you know, Nassau and Suffolk are one region, Long Island. Um, so there's a lot of talk about state and local help. I want to emphasize the local help, specifically the counties. When you think about what the counties do, a lot of people don't really know. I almost feel like we're sort of the Rodney Dangerfield of municipalities. <laughs> but we're the ones with the health department and the contact tracing. We're the ones with the ambulances, with the Department of Social Services, Office of Emergency Management, with the medical examiners. We're the ones who are actually carrying out the policy and doing the actual work. At the same time, we're the ones, at least in New York, who are really getting the shortfall in revenue from sales tax. So we're getting the increase of, of um, the response and the work that we have to do and the decrease in money to be able to do it. So, you know, our plea to our representatives in Washington, who I know our New York delegation is working really hard for us, we really need you guys to come through for us and to, you know, talk to your colleagues across the country about the importance of getting this done. Um, you know, if there's something, a little suggestion, if there's something that Republicans and Democrats can agree on, it's infrastructure. So yesterday I unveiled 12 shovel ready projects. They've been designed, they're ready to go. They've been stalled because of COVID. That's good union jobs, getting people back to work, which has a multiplier effect on the economy at large. If, if something could be done there, fantastic. If we could get revenue recovery, fantastic. Um, we're, we, we love our jobs. We're ready to do the work. We just need some help from Washington. Thank you. Go ahead, Ed Day. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mark. Mark, first of all, I appreciate you putting this together. Um, and I uh, also want to acknowledge my fellow county executives for all the work they've been doing and laboring under crisis situation. And also acknowledge Senator Schumer for his efforts in in understanding that it is the counties that are in crisis right now. Uh, we were one of the counties here in Rockland did not receive CARES funding because of the population requirements. Um, but again, as has been mentioned by many of my colleagues, the health department, social services, our, our emergency management personnel, public safety, they all fall to us. Uh, and, and as someone who had 25 years of command experience in the NYPD and Baltimore PD, I understand the, the challenges here when it comes to crisis management and emergency management. And again, as was mentioned, we are, the, uh, are gonna be in the forefront of the vaccine delivery. Uh, and we are behind the eight ball as it is right now. We counties are ground zero. And I think we all can agree that we are stretched extremely thin. And what we need right now is the intent that we're hearing from all elected officials in, in, in uh, Washington to assist. That must be codified to ensure legislation will support counties directly. I cannot emphasize that enough. And this is, as been said, this is not just a bipartisan issue. This is a nonpartisan issue. This is a human issue. This is something that was, was brought to this country. Uh, it is a national issue. And the, the, the national government has to really come, come down here and lend us a hand. They cannot expect localities to carry this entire load. So I'm making a personal appeal. In my case, I am a Republican. Um, I don't know why Mitch McConnell is so resistant to this, but I'm asking him as a human being, understand lives are at risk. Lives have been lost. People are sick. We are on the precipice of coming up with, with in a situation that could be the greatest fight of our generation, an ability to deliver the vaccines that will put us back to some sense of normalcy here in the United States. So I'm appealing directly, please understand this has to happen and do whatever you can do in a nonpartisan manner to do the right thing for the people of this country and the people of New York State. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ed. Uh, and from uh, the state's capital, Albany County Executive Dan McCoy. Thank you, everyone. And you know what? Everyone said it. And right now we need leadership and we need a partnership. And I have to agree. I don't care about party affiliation at this point in time because I can't look at my constituents go, are you Republican, Democrat, conservative, working families? Um, it's crazy. We need leadership. And you have to crawl before you walk. You have to walk before you run. And we're barely walking. And we keep getting set back. You know, first we started off at 2.2 trillion. Then we go to 960 billion. And out of that, we're looking at $160 billion to really bail us out, but not just us, town cities and villages who have to put our budgets in place, most of us, no later than October. 
uh, for the following year. We have to balance our books. Luckily enough, we had money in the reserves here. Uh, I had to offer 72 employees early out incentives to retire, so I didn't have to look at layoffs. Uh, we had raises in there and everything else, but again, properly planning, but not for this disaster and not for the long-term effect this is gonna have on all of our services going forward, on all the people in this great state of New York that need our assistance now, that are having a hard time putting food on the table, paying the rent, paying the mortgage. You know, uh, it's crazy. And, and for the Republic senators, it's time to produce for the people. That's what this foundation of this country was built on, for you, the founding fathers, to go out and get the money, help us continue to move forward. And the only way that's gonna do, do it all, is put it in a partnership working together. And I wanna thank all my county executives on this and the Marcus for your leadership and Steve Aquario and Matt Chase from NACO and uh, Mike Griffin from County Executives, all of us working together for the people, regardless of who we represent. And uh, the good thing I will take away from this, because you gotta take a positive out of every negative, is really the way we have crossed party lines as an organization and work together, helping each other out, calling each other at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I wish the Senate and Congress would take our leadership here in the state of New York of how the county executives, county managers led the way, getting things done and uh, worried about how we're gonna pay for it down the road. But now it's time for them to roll up their sleeves and work with us. And I do wanna commend Senator Schumer for everything that he's doing. Uh, in leading this and Gillibrand, but I especially want to say thank you to every one of the county executives on, the, on this conference call because uh, you've really been the true inspiration for, for us here in Albany. Uh, I just wish it would inspire us more on the federal level and the state level to get things done, but thank you. Thanks, Dan. And uh, certainly uh, those of us in the Hudson Valley have been working uh, together as, as most regions have. I, 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 we're going to pass to uh, Steve Newhouse, the Orange County Executive, I, I will offer uh, as a, a preface, a preface uh, uh, one of the first conversations, sadly, as Washington has been debating, uh, the counties in our region were discussing uh, the purchase and distribution of body bags. Uh, that is how serious the work we've been doing has been these last 11 months. Steve Newhouse. Thank you, Mark. And uh, my name isn't Mary Pat Smith. That's my chief of staff. I jumped on her account. Um, I want to, you know, echo what Mark uh, Poland cars and uh, my friend Steve Malone mentioned. Look, we're operational. We're on the front lines right now. And we are not looking for a second wave. We're in the second wave. Every day I'm reporting deaths in Orange County. In addition to that, the PPE, uh, the personal protective equipment, I'm keeping a rolling uh, tab of, you know, the county's doing well. But unfortunately, I'm forced to give out PPE again now to failing and fledgling healthcare institutions that either are going under financially, uh, nonprofits that provide those things that don't have the money to buy any. So the, these are caring for people in nursing homes that are dying on a daily basis here in Orange County. So the situation is grave. Dan McCoy mentioned from Albany, you know, the, the senators and the con congressional members uh, have the liberty of not being on the front lines of this. But they really need to understand, and I think a lot of ours are represented, our representatives from Orange County, of course, throughout the state, our two senators, understand how grave it is, but they have to get that message. If we wait months and months on this, it's going to be too late, and the damage is really going to be that much worse. So I encourage uh, our representatives, as well as the rest of the people in the country, to get their act together, roll up their sleeves, do what everybody that's on this Zoom call is doing on a daily basis and get the, jo the job done. So thank you again to Steve Aquario, Mark Molinaro for putting this together. Thank you, Mary Pat, I mean, Steve. Um, <laughs> uh, let's turn to uh, Ryan McMahon, the County Executive of Onondaga County. Uh, thanks, Mark, and it's good to see everybody again. And uh, I'll echo a couple points. And to Laura's point earlier, when people, uh, look at what county governments do, we take care of our communities vulnerable. And when you think about in a pandemic, that's where we all stand is we are all in a vulnerable situation and we are all doing things we never had to do. And the reason why we do them is because if we don't, nobody else will. Uh, we're the offices that answered the phone when everybody else went home. Uh, we didn't have the ability to lock ourselves uh, away like other leaders. 
uh, and we never derelicted the, the responsibilities and each of my colleagues is meeting the challenge and meeting the moment in front of them. Uh, and I'll just share uh, an important uh, point that's been made about direct funding. My county, if not the largest county in the country that did not receive direct funding is probably the second largest. Uh, we, were, we should have received $80 million of funding through the CARES Act and we received nothing. And I have the same problems that my other uh, larger counties do in New York State. Uh, and if you look at where we were in the beginning, the second wave has hit all of our communities now. Uh, the first wave hit us all, some harder than others. And my community was able to send down nurses and, and medical professionals to Long Island in the first wave. And the second wave, we can't. And uh, we did our budgets, like Dan McCoy was just talking about. Uh, our budget is $84 million less in 2021 than it was in 2020. Uh, and we did these budgets before this second wave showed its true colors. Uh, I was looking at 60 cases a day in the spring, uh, which we thought was a lot. Uh, now we're over 300 cases a day. Uh, we didn't budget for these upticks. Uh, we didn't budget for vaccine distribution in 2021. Uh, we were told we had to shut down our economies in 2020. Uh, what we're looking at is probably the greatest unfunded mandate by the federal government if we don't get help. And so we need help. Uh, I'm a Republican, Mitch McConnell, I need you to help us. Uh, and we, we need help now. Uh, if we don't get help, people are bearing the brunt of this. Uh, and right now this second wave is harder and more expensive, I think collectively than the first wave because it's hitting us all, not just in New York, the whole country. Uh, but again, I wanna thank my colleagues for the work you're doing uh, and the work your health departments are doing, your emergency management departments, uh, they're all heroes. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, the very first Ulster County case occurred in Dutchess County. Uh, and uh, it speaks to uh, the fact that none of this uh, uh, honors or cares about municipal boundaries. Uh, uh, the Ulster County Executive, uh, Pat Ryan. Thanks, County Executive Molinaro. Good to see everyone. I guess when you're the relatively newcomer, you get to, to go last. So I will uh, build on what uh, my colleague have wisely said. And I really, just quickly, I appreciate each of you. I've learned from each of you throughout this a ton. And, and I, um, I wanna thank you for the work you and your teams are doing. Um, I'll be brief, I think it's really simple. You've heard this, we've reached a new phase of the pandemic. In every one of our counties, we're, we're setting new records in a bad way every single day on all the metrics and indicators. So we're at a new moment. If there is any time for Congress, as, as uh, County Executive Newhouse said, to roll up their sleeves, it's, it's now. And to me, the message is simple to every single one of them, but especially to Mitch McConnell, put up or shut up. That is the moment that we're at. I mean, we've been all on multiple of these calls and I'm sick of it, we're all sick of it, our residents are sick of it and, and hungry and, and, and many of them dying. So it's time to put up or shut up. And um, again, thank, thanks to all of you for doing the work on the front lines. And I'm confident we can get together, we can get through this, this next wave and, and look towards uh, the, the light at the end of the tunnel with vaccines. Thank you, Pat. And um, as much as uh, uh, you wanted to go last, uh, uh, we, uh, we also have on the phone, but not, not, uh, not video, uh, PJ Wendell. PJ is the county executive of Chautauqua County. I'm just happy that uh, I can pronounce Chautauqua, but go ahead, PJ. And I know where it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you go. Well, first of all, thank you to everybody on the call today. And, uh, you know, uh, it might be a blessing uh, that you're not able to see my face, but uh, I actually, the reason I'm not is I'm on my way back from Washington. I was fortunate enough yesterday to be at the Operation Warp Speed Summit. And Paul Mango, the Deputy uh, Chief of Staff, from the president was very poignant in what he said. And this is something that they've reiterated time and time again. This event will be federally supported, state managed, but locally executed. You took one point yesterday, he took time to thank the over 10 or 12 of us that were in company as county officials. He knew, and he said it right there, that the counties will be the ones who will carry out this mission. When you listen to everybody who spoke yesterday, it will fall on us. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet with Congressman Reed, the leader of, one of the leaders, co-chair of the Problem Solvers Caucus, who has been instrumental in getting people to the table. So we have said this and we can't say this enough. The federal government has said it. 
if we have to execute this, we need their assistance. You know, in Chautauqua County, we're small. We did not get CARES funding the first time, and we got through. But now, as we all have said, our troops are getting tired. The same people have been doing the same jobs. We need to start getting in, you know, right now we need to hire more people, and the funding to get that is limited. Whatever savings we found early in the year are probably going to be lost now because we have to hire more people to get us through this without this direct aid. So, again, you know, I, I was very encouraged by the discussion last night, but I asked all of the representatives in the Senate from the Republican caucus and across the board, we need to work together and get this done. The counties are the ones who need this direly, and we need this quickly. So uh, thank you, everybody who's on this. Again, my colleagues, uh, county executives across the state, I've learned a, a ton. And as a new guy here, uh, it, being in this 11 months, uh, I've learned a lot from you, and we've shared a lot of great experiences. But, uh, you know, we're going to keep fighting. And, and, again, thank you for all your time and effort. PJ, thank you. And we noted in the photographs you shared with us that you were masked at all times. And that is uh, good news for uh, uh, and a good message. And I think uh, it, it goes without saying, but to PJ's point, we've said this before, uh, vaccine distribution and vaccinations may be the most critical job county governments will have ever played. And uh, because we're equal opportunity, I want to uh, offer uh, Kevin McManus. Uh, Kevin is the deputy county executive uh, of Broome County. Uh, he's uh, standing in for the county executive. Kevin, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the opportunity to, to have a few words with our colleagues. There's nothing that I can say uh, that'll be different than any of the other executives across the state. We are the front lines. Everything happens in county government. And the tax implications alone uh, are, are massive when it comes to getting this bill done. So we just want to reiterate to Speaker Pelosi and Majority Leader McConnell, please come together. What's taking you so long? We need your help. Thank you, President. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Uh, Steve Aquario, at this point, uh, I think we're uh, prepared to take questions. I'll let you all manage that. Okay, thank you, County Executive. Mark Levine. The lines are open now. We will take your questions via chat, or you can raise your virtual hand and we will call on you and unmute your line. If there are any questions, please let us know. That's my kind of press conference. Hi, can people hear me? Yes, Jerry, you're, you're yep. Okay, I, I raised my hand, but apparently it went unnoticed. I have a question both for County Executive Poland Cars and uh, County Executive Wendell. If you could just tell me the way things stand in your counties right now, what sort of cuts, limitations of service that you might have to implement or if you've made any concrete changes so far, just because of the, the pinch you find yourselves in? I'll start out, Jerry. Uh, first off, for the 2021 budget, we cut more than 200 vacant jobs. And of course, there's a, a, a number of layoffs as well. So we, we've cut a significant portion out of our budget. I think most of the county executives here will also agree we're, we all work under the tax cap formula in New York State. So we all have to keep our tax levy growth below the tax cap formula. So while we've seen significant cuts with regards to uh, the revenue that we receive in sales tax, uh, we've also had to act in, un, internally by eliminating positions uh, that we really need. It's not like these are positions that we can just wanted to cut, but these are positions we need. But I had no choice, so I can end up with a balanced budget. So while I am in a situation where we're hiring more contact tracers as we speak, uh, I'm going to probably have to hire additional staff as it, as it requires administering the vaccine. And while I did receive CARES Act funding for 2020 to help pay for the contact tracers and the other work that we did in direct response to COVID-19, there's a reason why we had to lay off those other individuals in other parts of county government because I don't have the revenue to pay for it. And with the expectation we're going to now need additional assistance as we go along, when I say assistance, I mean additional staff, if we do not get federal aid to pay for it, I have no idea how we're going to do it. Our tax levy is set now for the upcoming year. It's not like we can go in there uh, we don't have the ability like the federal government to print money. 
Uh, we are all still very worried about what's going to happen with regards to state assistance in the future because of the huge budget deficit that New York State faces. So if the federal government does not come and assist us with another round of assistance for direct COVID-19 response and then vaccine administration, I'm not certain how any of our counties are going to be able to do it as we continue to deal with a global pandemic and one of the worst economies that this, uh, this country has ever seen since the Great Depression. Uh, it is a double whammy. It's a triple whammy if you add in the, the issues that New York State's facing and the impact that often happens that we see in local government with the additional mandates that are passed down. So uh, I echo what everyone's statement said earlier. Our New York delegation has been fantastic. Uh, this is not a critique of our New York delegation. Senator Schumer has been on the front lines arguing for us. Our New York delegation, regardless of their political party, has been fighting for us. But we need leadership from around the rest of the country to realize that this is a global pandemic that's affecting communities far and wide uh, and that the second wave is not just affecting the coasts as it did early on. It's affecting South Dakota. It's affecting Missouri. It's affecting Kentucky. And we need the Mitch McConnells, the Senator McConnells who represent Kentucky to understand that their counties may not have felt the brunt of it in the past, but they are now. And if they don't offer us assistance, I don't know how any of us are gonna really be able to deliver the assistance that our community needs. And we are the front lines who deliver that assistance. All right, Mr. Wendell. Well, you know, I, I echo the same as Mark. We're very fortunate in Chautauqua County. We offered a furlough uh, in early May and that helped us get through this time. We brought our employees back uh, in August. And, you know, we were again, very fortunate that we could do that. We didn't have to lay people off. And our budget, you know, we haven't hired positions. We've let positions stay vacant uh, for this upcoming year because we don't have the money to hire people. Uh, and, you know, we did not receive that CARES uh, funding as, as other, as you know, Senator, uh, Executive Policar has mentioned because of our size. You know, our numbers have, have remained low, but, you know, now we're looking at over 300 active cases in Chautauqua County. You know, we're a tenth of the size of, you know, Nassau or Suffolk County at 1.3 million. You multiply us, we're at 3,000 active cases. So, again, it's relative to our size. This, this is hitting everybody. Uh, it was interesting to listen to somebody yesterday from a big city in the south say, oh, we have 39 active cases. In a large metropolitan city of Charleston, uh, one of them, they had 39 cases. Anyone I think on this call would love only 39 active cases in their communities. But, unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, many of our cities have much more. So here in Chautauqua County, we have managed thus far. But, you know, those contact tracers have been working, you know, seven days a week since this began. You know, it's not like we're going through a snowstorm or a tornado or a, a, a hurricane where we've seen devastation in a matter of a month or two, we're back in. This is nine months into this, eight months, whatever the numbers are. And those people need relief. And we don't have the funding unless the federal government helps us. Uh, you know, if we were to get that, you know, we're finding ways now we're making it happen. We just had uh, some resolutions that, or actually discussions that were passed for emergency hiring of individuals. Uh, our, our legislature very fortunately understands the need, but it's a growing crisis. And what we did early on, as far as, uh, you know, helping our, our budget is starting to be whittled away because this is continuing to go on and on. And we need that federal support. Great. Thank you. Amanda Fries. Hi, hello everybody. I see a lot of familiar faces on this call. Um, I, I was hoping um, perhaps one or two county executives um, might be able to weigh in on the proposals that are out there currently. I believe it's 906 billion and then 916 billion. Both include um, some funding for uh, state and local governments. Is that enough? Mark Polencarz, do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, federal, uh, the negotiations at the, at the NACO level? And then of course, anyone else who wants to jump in? Yes, uh, just briefly, as, as Mark noted, I'm on the executive committee of the National Association of Counties and the representative of the Northeast. So technically I represent everyone on this call. Uh, NACO has been actively involved in the negotiations. Now the 160 billion that's talked about is for state and local government. And the last I heard, it was, it was hoping it would be a 60-40 split. 
Uh, so we're not talking about 160 billion straight for local governments. Uh, we're, we're talking actually about uh, less than 80 billion. And while that would be helpful, uh, the original discussion in the HEROES Act was over 200 billion alone for local governments. So the numbers that they're talking about uh, coming out of Washington right now are not for a final deal. This has been discussed as being a four month deal, that this would be additional funding for four months. And if it's for four months, it's probably okay. If this was it, I can tell you right now, it's not gonna get local governments through. It's not gonna get state governments through. It might get us through the short time period of the next four months, uh, but if we were to live on, if it's passed, and that's a big if, because there's still a lot of folks who don't wanna support any aid to state and local governments in the Senate. But if it did pass uh, in its current form, it would at least help us get through this, uh, early, this, this winter and early spring period, but it would not be sufficient for the vast majority of assistance that we need to deliver the vaccines, which we all know for our general public is not gonna come until months from now. This is Pat Ryan from Ulster County. Just to quickly build on that, hey Amanda, um, and, and, and be very blunt about it. We've waited, we've waited as beyond what we can wait at this point. We need whatever we can get now. Um, especially heading into the vaccine distribution effort, which as many have said is gonna be the most complex undertaking of this entire year. So we know we're gonna need more, but um, we need relief now. Thank you, uh, Pat. Thanks, Amanda. Um, um, uh, I, I, we're, we're gonna wrap up. I, I offered this uh, last week on a call that Mark Polencars and I participated in, and I don't mean it to be uh, terribly sentimental nor too personal. Um, there are a lot of families that have experienced loss, uh, and uh, many of you know uh, that uh, my family, I lost my father in April to this very uh, virus. Uh, he was a Communication Workers of America shop steward, a very proud Democrat, uh, although I would like to suggest in the later years of my life with him, uh, very proud of his Republican son. Uh, our family is not terribly unique in this country. Uh, there are countless uh, seniors living in isolation. There are those in nursing homes who haven't seen loved ones, and there are families uh, who have suffered such tragic and heartbreaking loss. Uh, I had hoped uh, for five more minutes with my father. Uh, that is not going uh, to happen. Uh, there are small business owners that have poured their lives and their fortunes into keeping their neighbors employed and providing service to communities. There are volunteer responders uh, who every day are putting uh, their health at risk and public health nurses and healthcare uh, workers on the front line uh, who are dedicating themselves without care or concern for one's ideology, party affiliation, length of residency, who they love and uh, who they pray to. Uh, they're doing their job. Uh, they're doing their job because in this country we step up in times of crisis. It is necessary for Congress to do the same. In particular, I say to my friends uh, in the United States Senate, uh, those uh, Republican members uh, who uh, perhaps uh, are a bit too callous and uh, a bit too politically craven, uh, it is time to step up and do our job. Uh, Republicans and Democrats all across this country at every level of every level of government have been doing our job. We are stretched thin, uh, we are pushing to the limits, uh, and we will meet the test uh, of this challenge. We will rise to it as we have, but we have a job to do. And uh, the American people deserve a Congress uh, who is willing to step up as well. And leaders uh, in the Senate and in the House, Republican and Democrat, uh, who are willing to set aside any difference and focus on delivering uh, for the people struggling the hardest and delivering on the job that they are tasked with doing. So with that, uh, we'll continue to advocate. We're grateful again to Senator Schumer and our, uh, our entire delegation. I do want to note Tom Reed's leadership in the Problem Solvers Caucus, but Republicans and Democrats from uh, Suffolk and Montauk uh, to Malone, New York, from Buffalo to Beacon, Republicans and Democrats, House of Representatives, local government officials, we all have been advocating for this because we know that this is the challenge of our lifetime uh, and we're prepared to, prepared to meet it. So with that, Steve, uh, thanks for bringing us together. Thank you, my colleagues, uh, and thanks uh, to all of you for participating. Thank you. This will conclude today's press event. Thank you very much.